Hey, hey, developers, let's talk about Vue.js 3 and why you may want to use render functions in the future. And let's talk about ViewConf 2021. Hey, and if you don't know, I actually just got done. I spoke at ViewConf 2021. I did a quick lightning talk, which was the first talk I've ever done at a view conference and it was so much fun. I was a little bit nervous. We only had seven minutes to give the talk. So I spent a lot of time preparing. And when the talk started, I knew I only had seven minutes. So I went really fast, but I hope I got a lot of information out there. So I would say it was a great experience, but I did have a couple of people ask me some follow-up questions. So I thought I would go ahead and go over the talk here. For those of you who missed it, I'll show you my slides and I'll give a little bit more information. And yeah, let's just dive into it. All right, so here is the Vue 3 render functions. Here's the PowerPoint I created. Also, I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna look at these slides. They'll actually be up on my Twitter. So by the way, if you haven't already, follow me there. So that's awesome. So let's take a look. Hey, and if you're new to this channel, let me tell you a little bit about me. My name is Eric. I am a software developer at Amazon. I'm also a big fan of Vue.js, React, and Angular, and I do a lot of videos and tutorials on those things on my channel. So make sure you check me out. You can also find my Twitter account at ericch. Go ahead and throw me a follow, that'd be awesome. And you're already on this YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe. So render functions are really cool. So let me explain a little bit more about them. So I was, as an engineer at Amazon, we're always looking to improve our libraries and I work on the Amplify team and that helps you connect to a lot of different AWS services. And I thought, why don't we take a look at Vue, our implementation of Vue uh, in our libraries and see maybe if in some future updates we can use render functions to make some things a little more easier. So I kind of took a deep dive into it. I was, it was a definitely a, a big rabbit hole of what these things can do. I think the documentation isn't that great out there. There is some official documentation, but not a lot past that. And there wasn't a whole lot of examples. So uh, the purpose of this talk is to talk a little bit about more about some examples, some things I found out, some things I liked, and some things I disliked about this. So if you're completely new to Vue, let me tell you a little bit about what render functions are. So huh, I put this in the background. We need more power, Captain, because that's exactly what render functions will give you. Basically, render functions are a way to write Vue code without templates. Basically, it's an alternative to templates. And if you come from the React world, you may kind of think of JSX, but it's not really JSX. It's, it's a little different. But it basically is good for certain use cases in the official documentation, they show an H1 header and how you can dynamically change it from H1 to H2 to H3 without having a big like if statement or a bunch of if statements, if else statements. So that's one way you can dynamically create HTML tags. Uh, I think it is pretty good for library creators and it's really good when you need the full power of JavaScript. And so you'll see this kind of pattern when you're getting into more complicated apps and you need specific uh, components that do specific things and you're finding out just working with templates and it's just not as powerful as you as you want it to be so javascript will uh, be a lot more helpful and that's what render functions will give you so there's really two types of render functions so here on the left hand side and the right hand side you can see i'm gonna use my laser pointer on the left hand side this render options right here is what you would see if you're using the old uh, options API, which by the way, it's not really old, it's still new, but it's it's not as new as the composition API, but you use this render function right here and it just has this return statement. And the way it works is the first value is the tag name, the second is any attributes or elements, and the third is uh, like what's in between the opening and closing brackets of this div, or if you're going to nest some information underneath. And we'll talk more about what this H function is in a little bit. Now there is something called the composition API. If you've watched this channel, I've done quite a few videos on it. There's also an excellent talk at ViewConf 2021, which uh, once those videos are out, you could see that too. But here's a return statement. Remember, if you're using the composition API, you have to return it as a function. That's what right here shows you. And you see, this is the same example. And this essentially, if you ran this in your view app, this would create an empty page with one div tag that said hello, and that's all it is, and it would be the color blue. So that's what this outputs from this code here. And by the way, I put a star here because technically there's another way you can use render functions or return what we call vnodes, which helps create the Vue.js app. 
uh, template that is, and that's using like functional components because functional components can return it. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. So the next page we have here is this H function. So this is, by the way, very, before I move on, this is view three centric. This is what you use in view three, this H function. So H function is a utility to create V nodes, which helps create the your virtual DOM for your to view app. It could perhaps be more accurately be called create V node, but it's actually H. So when I look at this, there's three different ways or there's three different arguments that you want for your H. So the first is a, is like the string object or function. So this is usually like the tag name, like for example, in div, but it could also just be a string or some kind of object, or it can be a component name too. Just realize that this, you can pass components in here. The second one is optional, but this is where you put your attributes, your props and events. And it's just like an object. So you would have the, the prop name and then the value for it. And we'll take a look at example of that in a moment. And the third one here at the bottom, you can see my cursor is, is the uh, value that goes in between. So this could be the nested values. Like if you're gonna have a div tag and another div tag, you can kind of nest it that way. Or perhaps you're just putting the values of whatever tag it is. So you could have like a text here. Here's an example, you can embed another, you see here, this is an array. It doesn't have to be an array, but you could have just multiple values inside this div tag. And look, here's a component, right? So moving on, so what are the view directive equivalents with render functions? So as I was kind of learning this, I was trying to figure out like, what are some view directives um, that I normally use, like v4, vf, and how would I do this using render function? So here's a vf. So here's the const show two refs. Um, so I'm taking something from the props, I'm destructuring it, and then I'm just doing a ternary operator here. I'm just gonna say, if show value is true, then show this div, otherwise return an empty array. And this is one way to do it. You could certainly do it uh, another way. You can create your own functions that return these H functions back. Uh, and you can just use an if statement if you wanted to. So it's, I like the ternary because it's very simple. This is something you see in React all the time. People use ternaries and I think this will work well. Another one is using maps. So anytime you need to iterate over a number of elements, like here's an array of fruit, then all you need to do is this fruit.map and then you return from the fruit.map an li. So this would be like an unordered list of fruit that I wanted to display the user. And remember, this will create the template that your users will see. Here's another one, events and attributes. So this gets a little bit more complicated, but remember the second argument of your h function here is your events and attributes. So you can see here we have type equals text, name equals name, style, background equals seashell, and then on input. So this is uh, an example of an event that you may want to have inside your view app. So in this input, every time someone types, it would fire this event, which then you see this name, this is part of the composition API. This is using ref. It will then set the value of that name on every basically keystroke that you have. And so you can have on input and there's on change, there's you know on, all the on events are, you just label it in kind of that camel case and you can add it inside your, inside whatever you're creating. Now slots are a big topic. Uh, I didn't get too much time to go into them inside the uh, lightning talk and I will touch on them a little bit more here, but you can have, uh, remember when you have opening and closing tags of a component, anything with inside the opening and closing tags would be considered your default slot. You can also have something called name slots, but for a default slot, if you wanna use them in, let's say inside a, a render function or inside your setup function here, you could do slot, you have to basically first to check to see if there's anything inside the slot. And then if you do, you could return it or manipulate it or do whatever you want. And if you're using the options, the API, use this.slots.default. So that's kind of cool. Uh, just one word of warning, make sure you check to see if it exists or you'll get this dreaded slots.default is not a function. Moving on, you can have scoped name slots too. So name slots are just anything after the slots here. So you have slots.namescope slot, that's the name of it, but I could put just slots.yellow, uh, orange or slots.eric, that could be a slot name. And all you need to do is what I'm doing here, this is a function is checking to see if this exists, this slots.name slots. If it does, then you can, then it returns slots.name scope slot and it passes in the value. So the way you would use this is you could do name scope value. It's basically a function. We can pass in an object called foo 
And then in our parent component, we can get access to that using this syntax. If you remember, if you ever use scope slots, you use or name slots, you use this template syntax that was introduced in view.2.6, I think. And so you put that hashtag names, or you can do V slot too, by the way. But you do hashtag name scope slot and then equals and then whatever you're destructuring from there in this case would be foo. So that would return bars. This would return bar. I know it's a little bit of a confusing example, but trust me, it works. And this is really powerful because you could do a lot of neat things with it. So for example, you can iterate over slot data. So I could take this name scope slot and I could pass it into other slots if I wanted to. I could pass it into other components using render functions. You could do all sorts of things with it. And then you can display it with, I created in one project a render component that all it did was it accepted a, a slot, or excuse me, it's, it's uh, yep, a slot, and then it just displayed it to you using H. So I would just pass it in uh, with H. So you can also, uh, there's a lot of cool things. I would also look at the guide for render functions. I'll include a link to that in the bottom of this. All right, so what about multiple render functions per file? So this is something I've noticed when I was testing things out. You can create a single file component, like you hear in the left-hand side, and I can put multiple uh, components in it, basically multiple render functions. So I have this export, and basically they, they, they call these functional components, but they can return basically fragments or H's, which are V nodes that can be displayed in the template as components. So for example, I have fruits display that has a div tag and it shows a couple of fruit. I have fruits review that has like a little emoji uh, smiley face in it. And then I have an export default that just has a div and a hello fruits. And on the right hand side, you can see here, I'm importing in the named export of uh, fruits display and fruits review and the default export fruits info. And then I'm displaying it all over here in the left hand side. And this is a valid way of using uh, functional components with this uh, render functions and this H function to create a template. So you can have one file here and just have a bunch of functional components that return different, uh, basically VDOM, uh, VNode DOMs, different information. You can compile it all together and have it all in, in one file, which is really cool and display it in one place. So here's tip number two is debugging. So it, if you start creating and you get really into creating render functions, you are gonna have run into things like this where you got this really big nested form. Here's a form tag. And then inside that form tag, I have a SS, which I stand for scope slot, which I didn't put in the code right here because this was too big. But I, I basically created the scope slot and I'm passing in the shows that value. And then I have an H tag, or excuse me, I have an input tag, which has, and it's on every change in the input value, it's, change, it's setting the event target value. I have a button. And then I have a shows, which is gonna, what I'm gonna actually show to the users. And I have this ternary operator where I'm checking to save error.value equals what it equals. And then I have this, uh, I'm displaying the error value. Otherwise, I go through this map where once again, I'm doing kind of a, a bunch of crazy stuff here. I'm just showing, doing, I'm looking, I'm pasting the, sh the, the show there. I'm showing the show. And then I'm looking at show.name. And you can see this is, gets kind of complicated. In fact, this has a bug in it. And for those of you who are eagle-eyed, you may notice on this line here, I'm not returning back to H. And if, since I'm doing that, it silently failed. And this was a real example I did on a YouTube video a few weeks ago where I was trying to show you how to create a, um, a TV finder app using render functions by itself. And you can see this is kind of hard to troubleshoot and high, kind of confusing when it, because because it all blends together because you have all these H tags over H functions over and over again and it's all nested together. So if that ever happens to you, that's okay. So this may not be the best scenario to use render functions. I remember during my talk, people said, "Well, the first, the one thing I learned from this talk is not to use this." I don't think that's what I that wasn't what I was going for. What I was going for is that you can go overboard with this. It can be easy to get. Uh, confused because this is so long. And what you could do is easily, you could break this into smaller parts and and then do it that way. Or maybe something like this would be better just as templates in, in a normal template instead of a render, kind of this renderless render function with these H functions. Or maybe you use something like JSX. Uh, so you kind of have some flexibility there. You don't have to do it this way. I highly recommend probably not doing it this way. 
but I still think that there is value in some situations of using render function. All right, so that is it for my presentation. I hope you guys learned something. This was uh, pretty much what I was doing at, at ViewConf, except I probably said this whole, uh, this whole talk in about six minutes, and I just did it to you for you guys in over 10 minutes. So uh, I hope you guys learned something. If you have, have any questions, leave a comment below. Let me know. Make sure you subscribe too. Thanks.